Later this morning, Powell and Yellen will be back for round two, this time in front of the Senate Banking Committee. Joining us right now is Pennsylvania Senator Pat Toomey, who is the committee's ranking member. Senator, thanks for being with us this morning. We, we got a warm-up act yesterday when the two went in front of the House. What, what questions do you still have after listening to all of that? Well, Becky, I, I have questions uh, for each of our witnesses. Uh, for Chairman Powell, I, I really want to get a better understanding of how they reconcile the revised forecasts they have. They have recently, as you know, significantly revised upward their projection for real GDP growth for this year, getting closer to being in line with the consensus. They're at six and a half percent. But they made a very, very modest uh, project, uh, change in their projection for unemployment, and they actually project inflation to decline from recent months. That strikes me as a very unlikely combination. And, you know, some could argue that that's a convenient configuration for justifying this extraordinary monetary policy that we have. Uh, but I'm not sure that uh, that it fits very well. So I want to I want to explore that with uh, the chairman. Well, well, wait a second, Senator, before we, we move on, are, are you right. questioning their credibility on this front? You think they no, are I, doing look, this I think disingenuously? I, I, I'm not accusing them of anything. I just want to understand this. And, and my job in, in an oversight role is to, you know, ask some tough questions. Uh, if you take your GDP proje projection from 4.2 to 6.5 for the year in which we're, you know, this, this year, that would normally correspond to a much bigger drop in the unemployment rate. Why are they not forecasting that? May, I'm, may, I'm sure they've got an explanation, but I'd like to know what it is. And inflation. Do do most people really think that from here going forward, we're going to have a decline in the inflation rate? And I mean, by the Fed's preferred measure, the PCE, they're projecting it declines for the remainder of this year. OK, that's surprising. I'd just like to understand why. It sounds like you're a little more in line with uh, Dallas Fed President Kaplan, who, who was with us yesterday and explained that he thinks the Fed should be hiking rates by next year. He, he's a little more aggressive, much more hawkish. Uh, than other members. Would you would you put yourself in that camp? Or are you even more yeah, hawkish so, than that? Yeah. I'm, uh, well, so here's what I find um, hard to wrap my brain around. The Fed is projecting real growth of six and a half percent this year, that this year we eclipse the pre-pandemic total output level, that unemployment does continue to decline. And despite all of that growth, We've got basically a zero interest rate environment, and they're buying $1.4 trillion worth of securities this year, pumping massive amounts of money into the economy, in addition to what's already been done. It, is this what we're supposed to expect, like above trend growth, declining unemployment, approaching record low unemployment? We're not there yet, but approaching it uh, over the course of next year. And those circumstances require that we pump $1.4 trillion of cash into the economy? That seems odd to me. We, we have plenty of market watchers, including Dan Niles, who we spoke with yesterday, who would say they anticipate that you're going to start hearing from the Fed by May or June um, that, look, we are going to have to stop buying, start the tapering process at least, if not a rate hike, start the tapering process that it won't be necessary to continue this buying. It sounds like you're in that same camp, too. I, 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 absolutely. Um, I'm I think that's necessary, and that's that's part of getting back to something like normal. Now, I have to acknowledge there's a problem out there, which is the massive mountain of debt that the Treasury has to issue. And the fact that it exceeds the domestic savings rate and foreign buyers have recently at some auctions seem to have a waning interest, that's a disturbing combination, and that's part of the backdrop here. But, um, you know, it's not the Fed's job to uh, absorb that. Uh, so, you know, we'll... Uh, that's why I just want to understand better what their analysis is. Is there anything they could say that would sway you from your thoughts that we're going to be hitting inflation, that they should be tapering? Is there something that they could potentially say that would make you rethink all of that? Uh, yeah, possibly. Look, I think you could make a case maybe that uh, a decline in the unemployment rate is going to be more gradual. We've got uh, uh, hopefully we're increasing the workforce participation because that declined badly during the pandemic. Uh, maybe it's sticky for other reasons. So, uh, look, I, I'm not prejudging this. I genuinely want to understand better what, what is the analysis that gets us here. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.